Entrepreneur Radio with your host, Tyler Jorgensen. Welcome out to Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Tyler Jorgensen. And in this season, so far, we've interviewed uh, some really cool entrepreneurs. And today is no exception. I have the pleasure uh, of interviewing a friend of mine and somebody who I met through the ClickFunnels world, but who uh, has truly become a world-class marketer and someone that people go to as an expert in his field. Welcome out to the show, Chris Benetti. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to dial it all the way back. Like, were you, do you consider yourself um, an entrepreneur like that was born an entrepreneur or did you evolve into this? I definitely think it was an evolution out of pain, pain of the realization that to get ahead, um, I was going to just have to suffer or find a better way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, it was. And so know, what was I, that pain? Like, I mean, were you, it was like the, the age old, uh, I hate the nine to five or I, I just am not financially, this is never going to work. What was that pain point that, that first threw you into entrepreneurship? Yeah, well, I, uh, I actually started investing in property unintentionally. Um, at the age of 18, I bought my first house and my second house at 21. And, um, you know, my, my whole goal initially was, you know, make myself uh, financially free using property. But then the realization was, um, wait, I'm going to have to work in the iron ore mines, which is where I had my qualification and my uh, employment at the time. Um, mm -hmm. For a very long time to, you know, make enough money to do that. And so out of that, the Robert Kiyosaki's, the Tim Ferris's, the Russell Brunson's, the Anik Singal's started appearing for me yeah. and just made me understand and realize that there was better, more efficient ways to make money than to earn money, reinvest it and wait for that to compound over time. You yeah. Know, we could just proactively go out and make more money in the beginning instead of having a set salary. Yeah. Um, and so that realization and pain of going, I don't really even like what I'm doing anyway. And the thought of having to do it for another 20, 30 years is just so cringy. And the impact that that had on my relationship, like I used to work fly and fly out two weeks away at a time, one week at home, 13 hour days, not nine to five. So we were right. literally like 4 a.m. to <laughs> 5 p.m. Yeah. kind of thing. And um, obviously I had to get up and you know go to sleep around that as well. So there was just so much pain in routine and the environment that I was working in. I was head to toe covered in iron or mud every single day. Yeah. That just made it really difficult to me for me to imagine staying there. Yeah. And so what was your first, your first big step? I mean, you got these, these legendary books that have inspired so many people to make a shift, but what was your first big step out of the, uh, the iron ore mines? Well, first it was, um, trying to do side hustles for like 30 minutes after work it, uh, with my crappy laptop computer that I took to site with me. And um, so I watched Anik Singo's uh, Inbox Blueprint course and tried to do some affiliate marketing with mm -hmm. email and you know buying solo ads. And this was like back in 2015 or 2016 kind of thing. Um, and that was uh -huh. all of the rage back then. It was like peak affiliate marketing back then. Um, right. And essentially, you know, just tried that, had no success and that's fine. It happens, but I, you know, I learned a software. Um, and then I bought another course on like eBay drop shipping and, um, and ultimately tried that and actually got a sale. And then that person refunded and I was working with him, eBay in America and it was a pain in the ass to get that thing returned to the actual place that I drop shipped it from. And right. I just like was, you know, put it in the too hard basket <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, and so that all kind of led me towards understanding some email marketing software, understanding some like funnel or landing page building software, understanding how to list on marketplaces and things like that, uh, which led me to Russell Brunson and finding funnels. Yeah. And the direction that I took from that was I'm going to get good at doing funnels. And, um, you know, I ended up losing my job at the end of 2016. I think it was like September. Um, I tried to do some affiliate marketing for ClickFunnels back when like they were just starting their affiliate right. marketing promotion, probably had 20,000 users or something, maybe, maybe less. And, um, and ultimately didn't really have some success by myself there, but 
transitioned into doing an internship for a local digital marketing mm-hmm. company um, for Kim Barrett, which I believe you know. And, yep. um, and ultimately that just kind of took off my direction. Yeah. And so, you know, one thing I like about your whole story so far is consistently looking back for uh, looking at books, looking at courses, look, and, you know, finding an internship. How, when you talk to other people who are considering starting a business or becoming an entrepreneur, how often do you tell them, hey, find a mentor, find a coach, find a course? Like, how important is that? Mm. I think it's incredibly important. I think the action has to go with it as well. You know, it's all well and good and you feel fantastic when you buy a course or you read a book and you feel motivated Yeah, um, or even get some advice from someone. But, you know, if you don't take action on the advice or the book or the course or the content, then it's useless, you know. And I think a lot of, of people, you know, they'll, they'll kind of go through the, the motion of like buying thing after thing because it feels exciting and they get like a, you know, a dopamine hit and they're yep. like, cool, I'm going to finally make a change. And then they don't take action and that is where they fall short. So I'm a huge proponent of education in the, the different realms and learning from people who uh, first and foremost have the business that you want and also very important, the life that you want as well. Because yeah. without everything aligning for you, um, you're going to find that you know potentially they've got the business you want, but they hustle a lot and they're always busy and they don't see their family, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And if you do the same thing and follow the steps of them, then you you might find yourself in the same shoes. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I a lot of the things I talk about on this show are lifestyle design, the the Tim Ferriss type stuff, um, and was you know, lucky enough to have him as a guest on the show, even at one point, but the, it's amazing how it's like a constant battle to keep that lifestyle design in place because the average person is just finding, making themselves so insanely busy. Mm. Um, so let's, I want to talk about a little bit of what you're doing now, because when you and I first met, we were both building funnels for other people and there's been a bit of an evolution there. Um, and I really love what you're doing now. So First, tell us what it is. And then how did you pick that niche? Hmm. Um, yeah, so we, we market books for business owners. And I make that distinction because uh, not every author is a good fit. Not every author uses their book to make money. Right. Um, not every author has a business that a book is a you know, lead generation tool and asset for. Um, and so we specifically work with those kind of authors people who have businesses first and have written a book to elevate accelerate what they're doing in business on the front end um and essentially you know we we run ads and build funnels to help sell books on the front and convert clients on the back so people who buy the book becoming clients um with without without clients it's it's been a, a definitely an interesting journey and we've had tremendous success and also tremendous challenges as most businesses do you know i don't want to be um glamorous here but um ultimately you know the way that i chose the niche was because well first and foremost i used to run a a funnel design agency a funnel development agency conversion rate optimization kind of stuff so i took that skill set and put it into smart author media but um you know i was just kind of sick of of getting um paid on a one-time basis you know not having retainers really um you know every single month starting from zero and um so commoditized you know like there's really no one um you know there's just so many people in in the marketplace offering funnel services today you know click funnels and gust and sun and you know people like that have just made it so popular and such an easy business model to do all that kind of stuff um so smart author media and recognizing that there was a, a, a gap in the market was first you know, what are the niches out there? And then what are the services that were not being provided to specific um, people? And so, I, you know, I had a look at several different niches. I, I recognized that authors specifically were being very well serviced on a writing perspective, on a publishing perspective, on a campaign style launch perspective, but not on an ongoing marketing perspective. There's really no one who was doing paid ads for authors to help them make sales and to help them get clients. And so I just kind of went, right. I'll fit right in there. And it was after probably two months of market research and you know all of that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So there was a lot of setup initially. Um, and yeah. 
then the intention really was how do I get as well known in that marketplace as possible? Yeah. And I, I've loved watching you select the niche and then go all in on it. So many times people are scared to plant their flag and say, this is what I do and say no. Right. Especially if you were, I, I'm sure you probably still have some of your older clients, but you're not actively seeking new funnel clients. And, and it's so hard when you have something established or you're known for something to make a pivot. Right. Um, and then there's the opposite side where there's people that are pivoting every, every three days. Uh, and there's a new, a new thing going on all the time, but, um, really love it. Share a couple of success stories with smart author media and what you guys have done there. Yeah, definitely. So, um, my oldest client, actually, Nigel Moore, we've had tremendous success with him package price profit. He has a, a membership for MSPs. So managed service mm -hmm. providers, they basically do digital security for businesses, right? And um, they're very technical people. They don't know how to market. They don't know how to get sales. You know, they don't know how to do contracts and right. all that kind of stuff. And so he provides a membership that basically just like makes it as simple as possible, makes them, you know, marketing easy, packaging and pricing stuff easy, and just helps them make more money in business. And um, we literally give this book away for free in exchange for a name and an email address. Nice. And, you know, we, we, don't, we don't give away heaps and heaps but you know over the past year and a half we've given away about five thousand copies to a very niche audience i should say right and you know through that process we've had hundreds of people we've probably had about percent of people who get the book trial his membership which is pretty awesome yeah. um and that you know really has a, a quite a high retention rate uh around 96 percent so we've had about 450 people stay on to his membership at 47 per month. Um, you know, we've made probably close to 150 grand on awesome. just by getting a, a book away for free, <laughs> you know, yeah. no charge, right? Not free plus shipping, just free. Um, and that continues to make like 20 to 25 grand a month recurring revenue. Very cool. What, um, you know, you've, you've, done a few iterations of business and you've grown quite a bit what was one of the biggest challenges that you faced or obstacles that you hit and how'd you overcome it um definitely chasing two rabbits mm -hmm. um not many people know today because i'm so vocal about smart author media but i actually have a software company as well that i was a 50 50 owner in um now i'm have less ownership um, and do much less and obviously don't promote it much at all. But um, we custom developed this solution and it came around shortly after I started the funnel agency. So in 2018, so it's, it's been around for a while now. And man, when I first started Smart Author Media, I was so adamant, you know, I worked on this business and starting the ideation and stuff with a mentor. Mm -hmm. And I just told him like, you know, Charlie, how can we, uh, how, can, how can I work on both? How can I have both, you know? And it took me six to eight months um, of just grind. And hey, you know, if you want both, you need to align both niches together. Like the software needs to serve the same niche. Yeah. So the vertical integration. And if you can't do that, then you can't focus on two. And it just was, you know, after having it for, you know, five, six years, it was just such a hard thing to, <laughs> to just say, cool, I need to let go of this and move on. And so I would just say, like, I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with focus and not chasing two rabbits um, or three or four. Some people chase so many rabbits, it's not funny. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, the, the saying is, if you chase two rabbits, you'll catch none, right? You won't actually succeed right. in achieving the success and by actually catching, you know, the, the success and, and yeah. getting one. So, you know, just, just focusing and re realigning focus to, to one business was, um, was probably the hardest thing to me. Yeah. And so, I mean, you battled it for a while, but then you leaned into it. Was there some early validation that that was the right move? Yeah. I mean, I, like my agency, it was a bit of a slow burn, but after about seven months in Smart Author Media, I started getting some good traction. I got Scott Olford as a client and then, um, a few other bigger clients as well. And I just started having the best months in business ever. And it was all monthly recurring revenue based and we were getting great mm -hmm. results for clients. And so that just started compounding. And I'm just like, man, yeah. making peanuts or, you know, um, really just like struggling with development and direction with a software company was just so much less attractive than 
just making good money on, on retainer with agency work and the other benefit of smart wealth media is it's ads management mainly so you know building funnels is hard managing ads isn't too hard as long right. as you're doing the reps to manage the ads right and you're doing the things every yeah week. so you know it was just a much easier business model and it was making a lot more money and profit that's awesome and so as you started growing right i'm, I'm assuming you started establishing a little bit more of a team and i i'm cheating because i saw you share a little bit of a lesson on delegation and management uh recently what have you learned um about leadership and management as your company has grown mm. yes good question this is uh this is quite fresh so the, the band-aid yeah. was only just ripped off last week yes i you know um i think there's two things the first is um having a clear direction as a team is important and so we moved to a weekly plan cadence instead of a daily, you know, me telling the team what to do kind of thing. Like, obviously, the team has their their roles and responsibilities and yep. they know that, but they were still coming to me and seeking advice from me on a daily basis. If, you know, they um, were unsure about stuff, if they didn't know what to do for a specific project. And again, most of our work is ads management. So it was really just a lot of communication about like what to do in the accounts, you know, my ads manager would come to me and go, here's what I recommend for the day. And I'd have to like manually give approval or feedback. And instead, what we did was we moved towards a, a weekly plan where I go, cool, this is the, you know, these are the graphics that I want created this week. These are the, the ad um, requests that I want this week. These are the funnels that we're working on this week. This is what, you know, I want as an outcome for each client this week. And the day-to-day, -day, the budget optimization, the rolling out different creatives, the feedback on what copyright, copywriting we should change or adjust, you know, targeting, et cetera, is the responsibility of each team member. You know, like it's, it's something that they can manage and they can do based on their experience and they don't need me for. And I'm just like letting go and allowing that approval to happen um, for them internally and know that, that hey, they've got this. Um, you know, I, I shared feedback on, on my, my page yesterday and, you know, the, the team is just like very happy with the process. They love the responsibility. They love the fact that they're not trying to write a recommendation that they think I will like. They're just trying to focus on getting client results. And that's what yeah. I wanted anyway with the recommendations yeah. that they were writing. So it's funny. But how it's that amazing. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's, that's the challenge with management in some times is that if people are managing up to their manager and saying, well, I, I have to review this with them. Well, they're probably going to want to just get approval. But mm -hmm. if it's like, no, I want to just manage the KPI and outcome and results, and then we'll review the outcome together. Yep. It, it actually, it seems small, but it's a big shift because that's just humans. Most humans don't want conflict, right? So they'll seek mm -hmm. to get the approval they can. Um, Awesome, man. When you, there's a lot of things that have shifted in the industry and in the business and software. What is, you know, over the next, the rest of this year, what are some of your big goals? What do you think are get, you, you're going to go after? Um, man, I, I'm going to start podcasting consistently again. And for me, it's just relationships doubling down. Um, I, I really want to go to in-person events in Australia specifically and just network as much as I can become as well known as I can in all the different sub circles in the world of business um, sure. that are relevant, of course. Yep. And, you know, part of that is I've been podcasting and being a guest on podcasts like Biz Ninja like crazy lately. I think I've been on frigging 15 in the past few weeks. Um, and also just having people on my show and, you know, talking to other, other industry experts, talking to other bestsellers and just trying to get a lot of different takeaways. And I'm just feeling motivated to to just start like producing content out into the world. So awesome. you know, for me, it's it's networking, um, I'm giving value. Cool. Now you talked about it earlier on you know business and life and having that balance or the makeup that you really desire. What's one item on your personal bucket list you're going to accomplish in the next twelve months? Well, this is kind of cheating because it's been in motion for the past little bit, but. That's okay. Um, we're actually going today to visit a new house that we're building. So just resetting up our life in a new house because um, we've been I've been in this one for eleven years is 
really like the goal and having that set up in a way that we want to, you know, with um, design choices, landscaping choices, and like the family and the routines that we set around that and what we do. So, you know, that's going to be a big shift for me. And along with that, we're going to be five minutes from the beach. So I want to start learning to surf and like having that as like an outlet as well. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really just like an opportunity for like reinvention by having a different location. Very cool. I love that. Um, always good to have some change. It kickstarts a lot of, of creates a lot of momentum. Check out Chris Benetti on socials and definitely check out smartauthormedia.com. Thank you for tuning in, listening, watching, wherever you're catching the show. Uh, now, don't forget my business ninjas. It's your turn to go out and do something.